Wait, Kevin, is it going to show this? If I use present mode? Okay, you're live. Okay, wait, so can you see it if I, if I swipe? Can you see this? No, we can't. Oh, wait, no, we do swipe. Okay. It's on the projector. No, I mean on the... Yeah, on the Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Hello, guys. I'm Elena. Today, we're going to learn about color theory, except not really, because... I'm not qualified to teach you guys color theory. So I'm going to be covering some basics for beginners if you don't know anything about color theory. Um, but mainly it's tips like um, for my workflow and how I kind of approach coloring. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys get something out of it if you already do art, but maybe not, I don't know. So basics. Um, there's there's three properties of color that you should know about when uh, referencing uh, colors when you're um, digital painting or character designing or doing any type of art. Actually, this also translates to, to traditional art, but um, it's hue, saturation, and value. So hue is the actual pigment of the color, so like yellow, red, blue, green, whatever. Uh, saturation is how much pigment, so it's um, less saturated as you add, like it looks more gray if you take away the pigment and then value is how light or dark it is so typically um, you want your piece to have like good a baseline of the value like how we were talking about during the um, thumbnail workshop um, to in black and white um, because when you translate color onto that it looks a lot more pleasing to the eye if there's a focal point and uh, differences in values like contrasted values so, um, yeah, let's go to the next slide. So there's also um, what colors mean. So uh, in general, warm colors versus cool colors, you know, warm is more inviting and then cool can be like mysterious and whatever. So uh, this is just some random image off of Google Images that, uh, you know, explains some of the things that the colors <laughs> symbolize so that you keep it in mind when you're, when you're um, using colors in your work that they usually mean something. So like red, angry, and then blue can be like calm or, you know, wisdom, comfort, and stuff like that. So, yeah. So this is a very, like, it's a very complicated topic, but um, there's different color relationships um, that a lot of artists have used for like centuries. So even like traditional artists, um, that tend to be more pleasing to look at. So these are just some of the ones, that, like, general terminology for color relationships. So complementary would be colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel, so like red and green. Or And then analogous are colors that are adjacent, so like ne right next to each other on the color wheel. Triadic is forming um, a triangle. So if you took the uh, complementary, you take the split on the sides. Or like two more. Actually, that's split complementary also. Um, you take the two colors on the side of the complementary color um, and then rectangle and square. So those are just like other more complicated um, if you want to get more complex about it. But in general, um, for most of these, uh, it would be good to do like practices if we had time, but I don't think we have time to do all, all of these color combinations and um, activities. So uh, you can just mess around with it yourself and uh, also, this is, this is a tip that I know, but when you uh, use this method, it's best to keep one that's like a dominant color and then use another one as, ac as an accent. Um, this means like, you know, just in general, not like how much of the canvas is covered with that color or is influenced by that color, which you can, but um, also that uh, you can't, you shouldn't have all of them the equal saturation because that will make the like all the colors in the color schemes like way too busy so you should choose one or in the case of like mo like square and rectangle one or two that are the dominant um colors and the most saturated and the other two should be like lower saturation so yeah oh, okay Sorry. so tips and tricks this is already getting into i'm going to go through the whole entire thing and then we're going to do like some short activities on stuff okay so um when you, at least if you're, be you're a beginner, especially, um, you should always limit the colors that you use um, because 
it's kind of uh, overwhelming um, digital art because you have so many you have limitless combinations that you know that are at your in your arsenal because you have the entire color wheel you can do like I don't even know how many colors there are but there's a lot so um, it's better to limit it because uh, it'll just be too complicated and there's so many things that can go wrong in terms of like saturation and like like I said at the beginning, the three properties of color, um, it'll just it'll just be a lot. So try to yeah try to limit using for example the color schemes like the complementary colors. So like just um, purple and yellow as your like main colors or something like that, or at least influenced by. Um, for adding highlights and shadows, do not use white and black to add them, um, or like to highlight your piece because it'll make it look really really dull and uh, just like muddy uh, so you, you if you use colors that are adjacent to your main color it'll add complexity to the shadows so after this I'll show you some examples of that um, there's also um, you have to be mindful of uh, what's around the character or the lighting situation so this this is not really relevant if you're talking about like for example character design you're doing uh, like what the like color scheme for their outfits, but this is more like for paintings or for um, you know backgrounds for I mean if you want like video game art and stuff like that. But um, for example, like if you have a red background, your character shouldn't like blue would will not look blue if the background is red. Um, it will look more like purple because the red is like the red light is bouncing off of the um, of the blue, so it all the colors change if the color of the background is like not white or stuff like that so um, this is also one that I'll show afterwards but um, this is a tip that I use a lot that's basically because I don't I, I have trouble picking colors too and uh, you always just have to like tweak it a lot if it like looks off to you then you just have to like keep messing with it and that's something that you get used to with practice but um, one tip that I have is that you can um, use layer modes uh, which Photoshop has, but I don't know about a lot of other free programs, but I know like Procreate on the iPad has it and like some other ones um, still have maybe like from different by different names, but um, if you use layer modes like overlay and soft light and you use a color like like a light yellow or a light blue based on you know what the mood of your painting is. So if it's uh, like warm sunlight um, outside, you might use like a soft yellow. That actually helps to um, bring all the colors together and you can use that to, you know, make sure that the color palette doesn't look jarring or anything. Um, so yeah, I just, I highly recommend just like messing with a lot of like different layer modes. Um, also, if you're lazy or you can't come up with color palettes, um, there's color palette generators online, so I've listed two that I have used before, um, and they're pretty cool. You just like click the, click the space bar, and then they just generate a bunch, um, or like one at a time, and you can just keep cycling through until you find something that you like. So um, uh, this is helpful for uh, if you have no inspiration, and also uh, you can do if you like a picture, um, they can generate color palettes from the pictures. So um, I use a lot of like looking at different pictures for inspiration too when I'm in a rut so um, that's a good idea also or you know you can just look at you don't have to use the generator you can just like look at the picture and color pick it so um, yeah I'm gonna do the activities so in the art classroom um, discord um, I put a link to the Google Drive um, where is it oh my gosh um, which has three different uh, files. Um, I put them in PNG and PSD just in case you're not using Photoshop um, and you should be able to use it if you uh, if you just download the PNG and then you can like mess with it since the backgrounds are transparent. But just let me know if it doesn't work because um, yeah. So first we're gonna do the one that says like color theory template or temp which is this one um, which just has like a base um, a base color, local color, uh, default, ooh, default um, girl that I just drew before this so that we could use it. So um, I just opened this up, or I mean I drew this in so I didn't open it up, but um, I'm just going to be, you can use whatever brush, I'm just going to use like a 
hard hard round or just a normal brush, but um, all six of them should be on the same layer. And uh, okay, so we're just gonna we're just gonna go into this. So the first one is just gonna be reference. It's gonna be the local color one, and I'm just gonna show you guys what it looks like when you um, use black or gray as your um, shadow. And I drew them. You know, she's sad because she doesn't want to be. She doesn't want the um, the bad coloring. Do you have a question? Oh, I put it in the art classroom Discord. So uh, here. And it's right here, if you want to find it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, um, this is how I usually add shadows, or this would be like any type of adjustment to the colors that you have. So I'll, I only use like three colors for her, which is just like a light brown, a skin tone, and like a salmon color for her sweater. Um, but I add a layer on top of this group. I should have probably renamed them before I sent them to you guys, um, but the group one copy four, I do a layer on top of it, and then typically I'll do a clipping mask, but you don't have to, um, and multiply layer. Okay, and then if I do multiply layer, then I will just do like a simple, I mean like, actually this is way too dark, um, but this is what you don't want to do because it looks muddy and she's sad and she she hates this. So it's actually gonna take me a while. Okay. So oh, actually, what happened to the? Uh, oh, there. Okay, there. Yeah, that there it is. So it might look okay, but in in general, it'll look a lot more um, appealing to the eye if you if you use a different color so I tend to use um, a light a light purple or a light red oh, that's pink I'm sorry why did I say light red um, for the shadows but you can experiment so I'm just gonna do what I usually do which is like some around here so this is this is the um, if you've never used like the color picker or the um, this is not a color wheel, but uh, before the top is white, and as you go down, this is how this is the sat um, not saturation. This is the um, intensity, so it goes from like lighter to darker, and then this is saturation. Pretty sure, yeah. This is super saturated, and then as you go this way, it becomes it has less color because you're going to white and black. So um, I'm gonna just choose like a random pink color. By the way, are you guys like? You guys following along? Is this good? Okay. So um, I use like a light purple and uh, actually I want to do a new one. A light purple color, multiply layer, and I'll turn the opacity down because sometimes you can always mess with it later so you don't have to do that yet but if you do that it looks a lot softer and less uh, gross. So. That's much as my opinion, though. I guess you can keep using black and white if you want to, but... Oh, I forgot to change it to clipping mask. Also, if you have any questions, you can just send them into the Art Classroom Discord channel. Did anybody write something? Okay. Alright. So, yeah, this is a very rough example of you know, using, um, uh, what is it, different colors for the shadows. Um, and then you can also experiment. So down here, um, I will do some, let's see, like, let's say that she's in the dark. And so I'm going to do um, another multiply layer. It's totally separate. And use a big brush. And I'm going to do like a dark blue color. So this is like imagining that the, the background was is totally blue. So yeah, um, if you just do this, it automatically is like, actually I'm going to make it a little bit lighter because it's hard to see, but um, it makes it so that the colors, um, that's better, um, the colors are, they're unified in a way because you just 
popped a, a color adjustment layer on top of it, which is great. It's just like a it's just like a hack, but um, and you can so let's just say I did uh, I want also there to be a light behind her, so I'm gonna do a random I'm gonna do an overlay layer and then say like yellow yellow light. So I'm just gonna you can just like brush that on the back. And then now it looks like she's in the dark and she's her back is facing some light source. And this is just like a baseline, of course, if you want to do like more like digital painty stuff, um, you would further render this and like mess with it, but um uh this is a good if this is good for like figuring out your base colors before you go in and render, if that's your choice. Or if you like comic book style more or cartoon style, then this is like probably as far as you'll go in terms of um, the simple color. Um, so yeah, you guys can try for these other two, messing with like layer modes if you want for like a few minutes. Do some like, if she's underwater, or like if there's like a green light coming from the bottom or something like that. So yeah, I'll just let you guys do that and I'm just gonna mess with some also. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Okay. I think I have some that I did before. I can just pop up here. Oh, never mind. oh yeah, these are the ones I did before. Oh yeah, like the ones that I was like overlay and stuff. Okay, so um, I use for um, changing the whole color scheme and unifying. Um, if you like think that the colors don't look nice, I usually use overlay, um, and then just like put a like a clipping mask and just like cover the entire thing. Um, so let's see for for this girl, the one that I did the um, nice coloring for. I will just uh, do an overlay layer and we'll mess with some different modes but you can do different opacities because usually it's a little bit it's a little bit too much if you do a hundred percent but you can nicely like tint it like if you want it to look like like really warm warm toned then this is way too much but I'm just gonna like cover that um, but you can like throw on like you know a little like 20 percent and it'll just like add like a little slight tint or you can do you know Let's see, like a, I feel like this depends, but I already did her color scheme very warm, but like this is blue, so it's like a little bit, I don't know how it works. I mean, like they, it's just changing all the colors based on like a, like a layer, a filtered layer or, um, like the, what is it? The, 
it's like math because of the number code that they ha that they have for the each color. But uh, for some reason, just doing this, even if the colors don't like work super well together, it like makes it look pretty nice. So overlay, I um I use soft light a lot. Um, yeah, mostly I I think the the one I use the most is definitely multiply because that's what I use always for shading and for um, just like you can so I use soft light and overlay if it's a lighter color and then in general if it's something like they're in a different lighting situation and it's darker I'll use multiply so um, if you change this one to multiply tent generally I do it oh shoot please don't open. Um, then I would do something like this. So this is kind of like maybe she's entering a room um, that's like a little less lit than outside. And then like this would be broad daylight. Um, I also use color dodge a lot, but that's more for digital painting. So um, that will be next time. But um, yeah, the other ones are kind of weird. Like in general, they have some weird ones. So let's see like these ones are more like if you want to do something that's not like they're not technically for like more realistic stuff I guess it's just kinda of like if you were messing with it so yeah I, I don't really use those this one's kinda of cool this one like saturates it a lot color burn but yeah let's see where's the thing Oops. <coughs> Oh yeah, so um, so next we're going to go to the, um, or you guys can keep messing with that, but I'm going to start explaining the, what I'm going to do with these ones. So I just like copy, I mean I drew a, a fish, like one of those fish cookies, and then I like multiplied, I mean duplicated all the layers so that we can mess with um, different colors on here, because I thought that the fish would be easy enough to... Uh, like it's very versatile in terms of like how many colors you can use. So um, I'm just going to do some examples of um, basic basic shading. Oh wait, I don't want that here because uh, I did that before. Uh, so I did some earlier when I was trying to test some out, but um, this is also in the same Google Drive link, so I'll give you guys some time to like pull it up if you want to, or if you want to just listen while you're working on the experimenting with the different layer modes that works too so um, I'm gonna show you so I just colored beneath them with yellow and I'm going to show you again gross gray as the like just like this because I don't feel like doing it fully but uh you know it just looks muddy kind of looks, I don't know, I mean, if that's your, if that's what you want to go for, that's fine. Uh, but I tend to like to do stuff that's a little bit more colorful. So, um, or like, I guess a little bit more, um, pleasing to the eye. <laughs> so, like I said in the PowerPoint, um, making your, making, um, your shadows based on uh, your base color and just shifting it so I, like I said you can do analogous colors which is like adjacent colors to what your the main color is so since this is or um, yellow I'm going to do um, an orange shadow I'm gonna choose uh, I'm just gonna so a lot of the times when I'm when I'm choosing a new color um, I'll first shift it um, shift the hue down or up so in this case I'm gonna shift it down because I want an orange and then I'll like choose a different saturation. So for a shadow I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Um, and then another clipping mask. Reduce the opacity. Um, and then I'm going to just quickly paint this on. So this might not be like what you're going for if you if you want it to look more like muddy and uh, or I guess more um, muted if that's like what what tone you need then that's fine um, but in general using something like this would you know make it pop a little bit more um, you can also do like more unique colors like you don't have to do analogous you can do something like purple and uh, because I mean usually I use something like purple for for my shadows but um, that also makes it like look more interesting than just choosing an analogous color but this tends 
using an analogous color tends to make it look at least a little bit more um, realistic unless there's like a specific lighting situation that you're thinking of. Um, like this one might be lit by um, something like a purple light or it might be um, in a like a like a dawn or like sunsetty type situation because um, most of the time you want your shadows to um, be influenced by what the object what like what situation the object is in so if, like reflected light so if it was in, um, in if it was in a blue room then you might have like bluish shadows or like the whole thing might be tinted blue already so actually I forgot to change this to multiply oops um, so let me see so if I were to change this to like how I was doing with the girl um, and I was saying that this fish is in a dark room and so you know he's yellow but in a dark room he looks he's a uh, he's kind of grayish but um, because of the uh, what is it called I forgot what it's called uh, based on okay let me look at what this is I forgot the, the name of what it is it is called sim simultaneous contrast so um, so it looks great even though it's it's yellow so actually this would probably make it easier if I um, change the background so that it looks more like I'm in that situation mm. so let's see yeah so like maybe there's like a box above it and then and this is a shadow so it's in there um, you can uh, you can say you want the the shadow also to be influenced by blue or like really just mess with pretty much any color under the multiply and like you can see um, what kind of stuff that you like but in general uh, I use pretty much the same I use the same colors typically if it's not like a weird lighting uh, like this so but yeah I use see I'm using blue and because he's in the shadow and he's sad oh shoot I just <laughs> And did it. Or we can try like purple. I'm just gonna drop that. So if you wanted to utilize still the same, um, like a different color rather than just like the blue, because you were to use blue for the shadow, then I just made this one a purple shadow. And yeah. Um, also, another thing, this is like to make stuff more, more interesting. Uh, if I release this clipping mask, that's kind of ugly. Oops, okay, I'm just going to clean this real quick. Um, I tend to also add gradients to my shadows um, and lighting because I think... Actually, should I go over lighting first? No, I'll just do this. Um, shadows are not, like, the same in every spot on an object um, because there's, for example, the head, the fish's mouth is on the opposite side of the tail, so there might be light on the side of his face that is not present on the other side because it's being blocked by his body. So um, this is more like, it doesn't have to be super realistic. Um, I just like to <laughs> add it because it looks pretty. But um, So if I were to take this color, I usually choose something also close to this, so it really does depend on what you want because I have no formula for this. I just slide it on the color, on the hue, and then just like change this to either a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. Um, and then I'll usually change it to a um, airbrush or a soft brush to make the gradient more even. Um, and then, I don't like that color, um, I'll do some light brushing. So right now I'm making, I'm, I used a light pink on top of this originally uh, actually, I don't remember what color it was. Let me see what color it was, because I don't remember. This light pink. Um, and then it changes, like, it adds a little bit more, like, interest to the shadow by changing, like, what you did. So, for this one, I think I used purple, so I'll do, like, some blue and add some airbrush. And maybe... Just a light. So 
yeah, I don't know if that's self-explanatory or not, but it just, like, makes it look more interesting and, like, more dimension because the, the shadow's changing color. Same thing with light, typically. Um, ooh. So, we're gonna do the same thing on the purple, just... Okay, so who can tell me <laughs> what an analogous color to purple is? What should I do for the shadow if it's purple? Blue. That's, um, complimentary, yeah. We can also... Yeah, that's another thing. You can also, if you want it to be more, um realistic typically um and you don't want to do something like a, a, a yellow or for a yellow fish you don't want to use an orange shadow um because it looks very bright um you use the complementary color so for the yellow fish you would use uh purple which is like this and it gives a more natural um, looking shadow so yeah somebody said blue that's analogous to purple so um do, do, do. I'm going to go up to this one, and then I'm going to use a blue. Oops. I mean, I'm still an airbrush, but I don't know if I want to do that. I'm going to take my brush, and this is way too dark. Yeah, there's a lot of this is just like messing with it. What's happening? That was not... Okay. But, um... Yeah, so this blue becomes like a, a like a blue violet because the color on here is purple because the multiply layer just adds like a little tint. Um, so that's yeah, this fishy. Um, and then I'll do the same thing where I do. Actually, should I do? Uh, here, wait. And then another color that's analogous to purple is red or like pink so I'll do like a pink color and then in general if you want to do a multiply layer you'll either choose the like a normal looking red like over here for example and then you'll do a, a lower opacity because it's it's a multiply layer so it's gonna make the color a lot darker or you can choose like a light um, uh, a light a little bit less saturated uh, version of the color and then you don't have to um, mess with opacity as much, the opacity of the layer. So, yeah, this one makes it a little bit more... Is it because... It's, yeah, it's a little layer. So, this one doesn't show as much, which is kind of unfortunate. Maybe I should make it a little bit more saturated. So... Choo -choo -choo. Yeah. Okay, and then now for highlights, I utilize the exact same... Um, theory where you should not use white for shadows unless it's um, pure white I guess you shouldn't be using like white as a way to like tint it so don't use like a light yellow for a yellow object um, because you know like I said it makes it look more interesting so I'll just use um, an overlay layer for this one and actually I'll do it on these ones so let's say um, because I used a blue shadow here I'm gonna use um, a more red sh red light because using different um, colors for the shadow and the highlight also creates more interest because you're changing more stuff on it but you're keeping pretty much like the same uh, uh, the same local color so it's not too complicated so I'm using a pink uh, did I change it overly yeah so I'm just gonna like put this on here Doo -doo -doo. And he's all shiny looks really shiny Yeah, so he looks he looks pretty cool. I feel like I should do one to show you guys what it would look like if I used black and white with uh, the purple one. So I might just pop that right here. Even though, actually, no. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Mm, doo -doo -doo. Sorry that I'm coloring it really messily, but trying to make the best use of time. So paint bucket. Yeah. Alright, so if I were to use a gray. That's too dark. Okay, so gray on the purple. Doesn't look too bad, it's just, it's just bleh. And then if I were to use white, uh, well technically I would just make this a little bit more purple. Oh, wait, wrong one. Sorry, my layer management is honestly really bad. 
Um, hopefully you guys are better at managing your layers than I am, but I think I did this wrong. So if it was just adding white, then I would just go straight up. Um, and I'm just going to do the same thing, kind of doing a general thing. So if you compare the first fish to this fish, it looks a lot more dimensional and cool. So, and then, okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, this second fish here. So since I used a pinkish for the multiply shadow, I'm going to use a light blue for the, um, for the light. So sliding down the color picker to an adjacent color, blue-ish, and then, you know, changing it a little bit on ter in terms of uh, the saturation. I don't like that either, so let's see. Is that not... Yeah, okay, let's just do this. It's kind of subtle, subtler for the blue, I guess, but I don't know if I did the right layer, but this one doesn't look as good, actually. So a lot of it is, like, adjustment. So right now I'm realizing that this... This is very light, so I don't like it, so I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And I'm just going to cut it, make a new layer, because I want it to be darker. So yeah, that. And then you can always make it um, um, layer, like a pile on multiple types of layers, like, over, like multiple overlays to make it look, uh, to add more form, because... For example, I, I think that this is a cool color, but I kind of want it to be a little bit more, like, a little bit more punchy. So, um, you don't always have to use, like, overlay layers, though, because if I already kind of know that I like this one, I might just sel um, select the color. I'm using Alt-Click, alt and that's the color picker. That's going to be important for digital painting, by the way, but right now we're just going to talk about color. So, um, Alt-Click, and then increasing it a little bit, and then moving this up a tiny bit. And then I just... Uh, add some stuff to this. Kind of really messily coloring this, but kind of don't... Sorry. I'm actually going to do the same like uh, spray looking thing with this shadow too, because I think that it just kind of looks a little bit jarring. So uh, taking this color, I'm going to make it a little bit more red and lighter, and then hopefully this doesn't mess it up because that would suck. Hmm. I don't like that. Maybe. Um, yeah, it's a lot of just like messing with the layers. Ooh, that's not good. Um, messing with the colors until you think that you like it because that's what most of the coloring is. Um, I don't like this. What is happening? I think it's too bright. <coughs> I want it to be a little more subtle. Yeah, so that's a little bit better. Um, yeah, so we don't have that much time so I'm going to move on to the next activity but you can continue to do this if you want and mess with different colors. So all I did was yellow and purple but you can mess with um, giving like green shadows or something to the to the yellow fish and stuff if maybe he was surrounded by grass or something um, another thing is that even though I'm adding I'm adding like a um, an airbrush tint to the shadow but it's not like technically realistic but it it is based on something that is utilized in uh, doing shadows in traditional painting which is like reflected refracted light or something um, so t generally near the border of um, a shadow it'll be like a little bit lighter it'll be the a reflected light so I'm kind of doing that but I'm just being a little bit more um, uh, free with what I'm doing because I don't necessarily um, want it to be exactly realistic so for example this part here where is this layer this is why I need to be better at management of color layers um, so for example on this one um, it's like a an orange, and I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter, and or, mm, a little yellow. And I will... Why is this weird? And if I just do a tiny bit of this on the bottom, you can like barely tell, but it's just like a small... It adds, it adds a little bit more. Again, form, dimension. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. 
on the second fish, but just a little bit. Okay, the final thing is also in the um, Google Drive, and it's the color theory background template. So these are some like random um, backgrounds that I sketched out with like you know just no lines, but just um, coloring or like digital painting. Um, so this is kind of like um, an activity to test uh, the changing the colors based on the environments. So for so if you have this open, um, or if you have it if you don't have Photoshop and you use something else, select the tool and then cut it into a new layer and then drag it on. But the same thing with this one because I did the uh, in the PSD. But you can choose the selection tool if you're in Photoshop and then right click and then do. Uh, Actually, it's not right. I'm on the right thing. Uh, free transform. So I'm gonna drag this little girl onto the first background, and you can see that she looks super out of place because her colors are like her flat local colors, and you know this it just it doesn't fit. She's too bright. So um, an example of what I would do if this was um, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily always have something where I'm dropping in a character into a background, but this is just like uh, an example. Um, I'm going to create another clipping mask on top of her, so new layer and then clipping mask. Um, and then you can experiment with this because some things work better than others, but I will grab um, my brush tool. Wow, this is really large. I grab my brush tool and I use the color picker, so alt again, and I choose the color in here. Um, this blue maybe or this greenish color and it's a clipping mask so when you do a paint bucket it'll just color cover it oh, I forgot to change it to multiply um, it'll only show what color is um, it'll only affect uh, what is on the layer below it so it only filled in the girl so yeah so she already looks like she fits a little bit more because she looks like she's underwater and in the dark I don't know how she's surviving down there because she doesn't have any scuba gear so but that's fine um, so I'm gonna move her a little bit closer to this light um, so right now she I just did that multiply layer you can mess with it you can do like maybe a little bit lighter um, but I kind of like this dark one and then there's also I there's a light source right here I don't know what it is I think just glowing whatever so um, another clipping mask and then I'm going to do an overlay layer or color dodge or whatever. There's a lot of different ones, so just um, do whatever you want. But um, I'm gonna use this yellow. Actually, I don't. I think it's a little not saturated enough, so I'm gonna just make it more saturated. Um, gonna zoom into her right here. She looks amazing. Yeah, look at her. Um, and I'm going to brush onto the sides of this girl. So imagine like cause she's in the, you know, she's right next to this this light. So um, as you can see, like this is changing this blue into a green color because it's slightly um, it's tinted it's tinted with yellow so um, yeah this is what I'm doing so so already you know she looks she looks great she's she looks like she's supposed to be there except she's not supposed to be there because she's probably dead if she's actually down there um, sorry um, but yeah so comparison wise she looks like she's actually part of the background so that's just um, let me see, I'll show you. So this is another thing with the simultaneous uh, contrast. But um, so if I'm selecting this color right here that's showing up as her skin, um, this is the color that it looks like. But if this is how her skin actually looks, like this is the color from it. So it changes based on the situation. So um, I'm going to do this one on the bottom right here with another girl. Pick her up real fast. Just drop around here. Here she's so happy watching the sunset. Um, for this one I'm going to do another like multiply layer because that's I'm just I'm basic so I'm gonna do that. Um, oh that's not good. Please stop. Why do you do this to me? I'll take back. Ah. So another clipping mask, another multiply layer. For this one, I feel like, why does it do that? For this one, I feel like uh, 
the colors in the piece are not actually like completely accurate. I just kind of did it really quickly. So a lot of this stuff is saturated, which is exactly what I said not to do, but I digress. So I'm going to choose um, this color and then just see what happens. It's probably going to look really weird. Yeah, she looks weird. Um, I'm going to mess with the opacity. So yeah. So just by doing that, she looks like she fits a little bit more in there. So I mean, honestly, it's, it's like a one step situation. Oh my gosh, it's showing you guys what my messages are. Um, it's like, um, yeah, I just do multiply. Or like, if it was in the case of maybe this bright one. Actually, I'll just do one more because we have time. Um, this one is just broad daylight. So typically, local color will look fine. Um, but, you know, this one, it's like greenish blue because it's outdoors. And it's like a fantasy scape with lots of grass. So, um, I'm going to add this back. Um, oh my gosh, why does he keep doing that? I'm going to do um, a soft light layer on this one, um, just like a subtle change, um, because even though it's subtle, I think it makes a, a big difference. Um, so another clipping mask, soft light, and oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening to my computer. <laughs> uh, soft light, and I'll just do like a green. No, actually, I'm going to do a blue because that looks gross. A blue, yeah. And then I'm gonna lower the opacity to like 25. But even though it's like really, really slight, it's still, I feel like it still looks a little bit better. She she still kind of looks out of place, to be honest, but maybe I can do, I mean, they, they don't have shadow, so that's probably another thing, because I feel like the light is coming from directly above, so maybe there should be a shadow. Um, but that's basically, you know. Does anybody have any questions? I don't know if I like, if you guys understood all the stuff I was talking about, but, uh, Hopefully it was slightly helpful. Um, yeah, does anybody have any questions about anything? No? Okay, I'm gonna cover a couple other things then. Okay, um, so uh, for colors, this is just an example of, well, most of these are mostly monochrom, not monochromatic, yeah, monochromatic, cause, um, or not monochromatic, what am I trying to say? Analogous. Um, or analogous color schemes because I used colors that were very similar. So in this one I used um, orange and yellow and like red or pink um, in it. So those are all next to each other. Um, and then in this one I used a lot of blues and greens, but then I did a um, complementary color um, and I did yellow because there's some, it's like a purplish, it's a purplish blue. So I did like a yellow color. Um, I think it probably would look better if I did orange um, because... Blue it, blue's complementary is orange, so why? Okay. So if I were to, I don't know why this is probably fine. I don't need to do this right now, but um, in general, you can. This is like an example of um, how I used yellow or orange as like an accent, and I didn't overwhelm the whole thing with. Um, with both colors because it add, it looks more interesting if there's like a focal point. Um, but there should still be some like forms of uh, accent throughout the piece if you can. So I might add like, you know, maybe like this fish has like something like a little light over here or like on here there might be like some um, color showing. Um, but it's still, this is still the focal point. So, um, but yeah, you can do that. You can just have a few things showing up. Um, also, let me see, uh, I'm going to just hide all of these group. Yeah, so another thing is that um, in general, you can start with color, but I don't recommend it um, always unless you're like keying colors in for like, you know, trying to figure out what the mood is. But if you're actually trying to do a digital painting or something, um, you should start in black and white because that's where, mo like, the first thing that people um, notice, or I guess not notice, but um, that makes like a successful piece is, like, utilizing value really well. So um, I can do this and show you guys the black and white, um, which are, they're not super, like, good value in this one. So, for example, this one is, like, really... Like, all the tones are really, like, mid-tone. It's not interesting. Um, but this one has a little bit better, like, um, 
use of having like a really light color here that's edged with um, a darker value and then over here too these these shadows on the um, rock formation um, are contrast with like the lightest value on here and then this is also contrast with the lightest value and then here too like this whole thing creates interest because it's like a darker um, darker color value and then uh, has like this really really bright value so like a white um, and typically you can work from black and white into color if you do um, I know Selene was asking me like what colors what modes I use often and I would say color is also one that I use a lot because if I'm working from black and white um, half the time I do that but half the time I don't but if you're working from black and white you can use the color or soft light like just mess with a bunch of the different modes so I use color and soft light onto um, my black and white versions um, to add color but I start with this value this value painting because it um, makes sure that what the I what's what the viewer looks at is what I want them to look at and what the focal point of the piece is is what I want them what I want it to be but this is a really um, bad example I don't have a lot of time but this is probably something that I'm gonna go in on digital painting as well um, digital painting is gonna be the next workshop is gonna be like a lot of like rendering and tips that I do um, it might also cover a few things with like this I'm gonna mention also like the multiply layers and stuff too because I use that a lot um, but a lot of like stuff's gonna go down in that I don't yeah <laughs> in that uh, workshop so now it looks like it's glaciers because I did blue um, and so yeah this is another thing that I sometimes use when I want um, to work on the value painting first but I would add in color after this so right now it's only like blue but you can add in um, some more interesting things like maybe a yellow in the back I don't like that um, oops so um, maybe I want some green here that's not working this looks a lot more like ethereal with doing this, but in general, it's not exactly what I would do. But yeah, that's sort of it, I guess, because it's 7.58. But if you have any questions, you can come up to me and ask. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming, guys. It's the workshop.